So, I think it's time to talk about Ukrainian Nazis more. Because, uh, not only do I want this to be a short video, and this is a subject I can get through very quickly, um, especially since I've got a lot of ground already covered on this channel and elsewhere, um, but also because this, uh, th this subject is one that I've covered on Twitter, so I already have one of the tweets pulled up. Um, just to start this off, uh, Ukrainian um, commanders were released from prisoner of war status, um, providing they remain in Turkey uh, until the war is over. Um, say what you want about this. I don't fucking care. I'm not on Russia's side either. Um, but, like, ultimately, uh, I thought I would talk about the two people that, uh, that the New York Times decided to mention. And those two people are, uh, Nazis. And, uh, I feel like it's necessary because Twitter, uh, trended Azov. And because Azov trended, um, they, uh, they, they, they had this article floating around from New York Times. And, uh, the New York Times article let's just say, is interesting and was responded to pretty fucking well by actual anti-fascists and anti-racists because uh, it's, it's a doozy, yo. Um, so let's start with the article because it's a relatively good way to describe why this is a problem. Um, <laughs> so you, you go up to this article... Um, and it's just propaganda, 100% solid propaganda. Um, and it starts out by saying, Russia-Ukraine war. Ukraine reports advances in the southern counteroffensive. And uh, one of the updates that it gave was um, <laughs> that dear old uh, Nazis had been released. This, this is Prokopenko. And they're showing him smiling. Isn't he, isn't he adorable? Isn't this, this guy adorable? And it says, released Azov commanders have an emotional reunion with family members in Turkey. So, first off, I think it's funny uh, <clears throat> that Russia is uh, doing this at all. Like, wasn't one of their propaganda pieces that they were going to denazify Ukraine? But like, okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me uh, scroll down a little. Uh, commanders of Ukraine's celebrated Azov battalion have held an emotional reunion with their families in Turkey. Ukrainian officials said, honoring the fighters released from Russian confinement last month uh, as part of the largest prisoner swap since the start of the war. Among the 215 Ukraine prisoners of war released in the exchange were 108 members of the Azov Battalion. The group's defense of the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol, the southern part, uh, port city decimated by Russian forces in the first months of the war, has become a powerful symbol of the suffering inflicted by Russia and the resistance mounted by Ukraine. Under the terms of the swap, the commanders of the battalion must remain in Turkey, which brokered the exchange until the war ends. After months of waiting, they were re reunited with family members on Monday, according to a statement from the office of President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine and photographs distributed by the Ukrainian Presidential Press Service. I, 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 I repeat, because I feel like it's something that I should repeat, which is that uh, you can tell you're reading Western propaganda for this when they misspell Zelensky, when they do not include two Ys, because they're not speaking from any perspective of having read um, 
what's on the ground there. They're speaking from the perspective of somebody who wants the West to believe somebody. And, and Westerners, we are too dumb to understand too wise, you know? Or these people just didn't read enough to know that that's what it was, that it was too... Anyway, point is... Uh, <laughs> um, there are many emotions. Ukraine's first lady, Olena Zelenska, who attended the meeting, said in a post on Telegram, the road to this movement was long and difficult. Finally, they were able to hug. Aw, that's fucking adorable. Isn't this all adorable? Um, so then it continues. While the Azov fighters were holed up inside the steel plant in the spring facing withering Russian attacks, some of their wives helped lead an international campaign to end the fighting, appealing to world leaders and even earning an audience with Pope Francis at the Vatican. The last holdouts were taken captive by Russia in May after the Ukrainian authorities declared an end to the combat mission there. Pope Francis. Isn't this guy supposed to be the guy who's like anti-bigot? Hey, we, pl we plastered a rainbow flag on the Vatican. That means that they're no longer bigots, right? That's this guy, right? Wasn't he the guy that was saying we should accept people? Why is he uh, taking an audience with fucking Nazis? Oh, right, because none of this is genuine and it's all about isolating control. So uh, it continues, you know, that um, <laughs> the commander of the Azov Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Denis Prokopenko, and his deputy, Captain uh, Sviatoslav Palomar, were among the commanders released by Russia. In exchange, Ukraine freed 55 prisoners, including Viktor uh, Medvedchuk, a Ukrainian businessman and politician who is a close friend of Russia's President Vladimir Putin. So they released a single businessman and they got back two Nazis and quite a few other Nazis and probably some people who were on the side of the Nazis. And if they weren't before, they probably are now because, you know, being prisoners of war together has a tendency to create some sticky glue. But like, uh, I, I feel like, you know, I feel like it's 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 valuable to bring this up. And uh, I'll, I'll finish this part. Miss Zelenska said she gave the Azov Italian members thanks from Ukraine, from the president and all the people for whom they are fighting. But she emphasized in her statement that many Ukrainian prisoners of war remained in Russian hands. And we need each and every one alive, she wrote. So, who are these two people that this article chose to highlight well the first one is one that i've gone over on twitter before because i talked about this prisoner of war exchange already and that is lieutenant colonel dennis uh Redis prokopenko and he joined azov in 2014 here's him with nazi symbols and on the cover of one of their nazi zines he's a high commander now regarded by zelensky a hero NATO sources just celebrated his release from prison because of course. So, this is Prokopenko. Right? So, they, 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 they let who go? Oh, this guy. They want you to think of him, though, like this and not like that. It's a lot... It's a lot harder to think of him like 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 this and be angry, but it's a lot easier to think of him like this if you know the facts. And the facts are this is who he is. This is Prokopenko. And um this is him doing a fascist salute in front of and wearing a Nazi symbol, the Wolfsangel, as a part of his ass off regimen fucking fascist training. In a ceremony, right? Um, th and that's like official fucking picture. I'm not embellishing. This comes from them. You don't have to fucking look hard 
This comes from the people in question. And uh, the CIA website, uh, Radio Free, uh, Svoboda, uh, which is both the word for freedom over there and also the word uh, that is related to a fascist political party there. Isn't it great that uh, uh, their word for freedom is being used for a Nazi political party? I think that's fucking great. And the uh, the post here is in Russian, but uh, you can read it if you use a translator or you can go to the fucking source. Like, you can find my tweet. Um, and you can also read this. This is very interesting. It's It's definitely not something you should look into, though. Not like this was posted right before the war because it was discovered fairly close to the war and not like they would want to snow some stuff and cover some stuff up and coat their fucking investments in a veneer of, you know, patriotism and courage. No. Nah. They would never do something as corrupt as funding far-right militants overseas. Oh, but by the way, the Palomar guy, this is him. And and the reason uh, I, I, I bring this up is because um, he he's a fucking Nazi. He was a member of the Patriot of Ukraine, uh, and they were Nazis with a Wolf Song Wolf as their symbol, right? And it's under uh, Andrei Bilecki, uh, who would form the Azov Battalion, who is the guy who runs Patriot, and like it's a big fucking cluster of Nazis, which is why they have a Wolf Song as their symbol. And which is why uh, they they went on to become the, the root for a lot of the um, Nazis in Ukraine. And why the Azov Battalion has, like, a veteran of Azov as the leader of the VA. Why a ton of, uh, of support has been levied to Azov and C-14 and Svoboda and right sector and all these uh, organizations because these guys were an extremist political party that existed all fucking ready. And, 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 and what's their ideology and program? Oh, right. Fucking Nazi shit. Can we, can we oppose these guys without being Kremlin stooge? No. Oh shit. God damn it. I keep on saying, saying I'm not a Kremlin stooge, but they clearly pay me so well. Uh, I, I live in awesome conditions, in fact. I, uh, you know, I, I I love Putin, and and I get paid so much by them. If you disagree with that, though, and if you don't think I'm a Kremlin stooge just because I oppose the Nazis the U.S. likes, feel free to throw some money at the links in the description. But, like, look at it. It's fucking Nazism. That's what it is. Right? It's so the Patriot of Ukraine promoted an extreme nationalist, racist, and Islamophobic platform and sometimes uh, used neo Nazi symbols, including er, political violence, racism, neo Nazism, racialism, direct action, national solidarity and, uh, solidarity and hierarchy, obedience, and personal devotion to the national leader. And the greater Ukraine, i.e. creation of the third Ukrainian empire, after Scythia and Kievan Rus, from the Baltic to the Caucasus. So, they want a broader country. They're imperialists, and so are the people uh, that are trained by these people. That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with Nazi imperialists. And they have a whole goal for an Azov movement. Like, it's not just a matter of, of the Azov Battalion, which is already bad enough. Like, these people are guilty of torture and war crimes. The UN hated them until it was time to support them in favor of fucking the new globalist war. Right? 
they're neo-Nazi. But we're not allowed to talk about that. You know, and we're also not allowed to talk about the the Azov movement. You know, we're not allowed to talk about that because if we start talking about things like the Azov movement, it'll make us sound like Kremlin stooges, and you wouldn't want to be a Kremlin stooge, would you? So let's talk about the Azov movement. The Azov Battalion has created its own civilian political movement, collectively known as the Azov Movement made up of an umbrella of organizations formed by former Azov veterans or groups linked to Azov, and with roots in the ultra-nationalist paramilitary Patriot of Ukraine group, led by Azov founder Andriy Biletsky, and the associated far-right Social National Assembly. If you flip the words, it's not National Socialist. They're not Nazis. They're Social Nationalists. They're, they're, they're Sinas. You know? Um... In 2017, according to Foreign Affairs magazine, after the union with the National Guard, the government's first act was to root out two groups within Azov, foreign fighters and neo-Nazis, by vetting group members with background checks, observations during training, and a law requiring all fighters to accept Ukrainian citizenship. Fighters who did not pass this screening were offered the chance to join civilian volunteer corps to help the war effort. These corps assisted police, cleared snow... Uh, and even worked on a public radio. According to Reuters, at this time, the unit worked to depoliticize itself. Its far-right leadership left and founded the National Corps Political Party, which works with its associated activist organization, the Azov Civil Corps. The Patriot of Ukraine websites were shut down or put under restricted access. Some experts agree with the view that there is increasingly great separation between the Azov movement and the battalion. <laughs> so they're, they're softening it right here. So if you want to read that, you can. But basically, it goes on to say that, uh, that the whole movement here started with that and became the Azov Civil Corps, the National Corps, the Youth Corps, the National Militia, and Centuria. And basically, their whole goal is to form a global movement. A global movement which they were being exposed by uh, on, you know, last year's terms. So let's, let's, let's look at, at, uh, at Time Magazine here. Because Time Magazine was very concerned in the grand old year of 2021 about how uh, white supremacist militias are using Facebook to radicalize and train new members. And which 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 militia did they talk about? Oh, Ukraine's far right Azov movement, which has inspired white supremacists around the fucking world. Man, time must be infested by Kremlin propagandists. This is Kremlin propaganda. And and who did they list? As, as, you know, being involved here? Well, it couldn't have been uh, the people that they just released, right? Oh, right. Uh, just, you know, Sviatoslav Palomar, one of its top commanders. So what's the context of this? Well, basically, they went over the fact that uh, the, the uh, Azov movement has been trying to recruit people around the world. And this Azov movement uh, fucking uses social media and uses the internet in general to inspire white supremacy. It had an impact on the Unite the Right rally in, uh, in America. It had an impact on the Charlottesville rally in fucking America. Um, and it has impact all over the fucking world. You're not allowed to bring this up, though. You're not allowed to bring this up without being a Kremlin propagandist or something. Um, and you're certainly not allowed to look at all these tattoos, look at all the fascism. You're not allowed to look at the fact that Christchurch in New Zealand was partially sponsored by it. You're not allowed to look into any of this. Look into the fact that their foreign-trained fighters eventually go on to be domestic racist terrorists. And you're certainly not allowed to look into the fact that the U.S. government stopped giving them money not too long ago. You're not allowed to look into any of this. Even though it came out last year, right? Just ignore it. It came out last year. 
Last year is so long ago, right, guys? Right, guys? So don't look into it. Don't do any research of your own. And certainly don't realize that after Christchurch, Facebook banned praise, support, and representation of white nationalism and white separatism and introduced measures aimed at de-radicalizing users who search for white supremacist terms. But <laughs> activists say it was too late. By allowing groups like Azov to thrive on its platform for years, Facebook helped them build a global network that will not be easy to break apart. Because this material was allowed to proliferate so long, in particular on Facebook, we now have thousands, millions of people who have been sucked into the world of white supremacy and other forms of extremism, says Byrick. That platform, or that problem now exists. That's the fallout for not having acted originally. The U.S. government was also slow to acknowledge the danger of Ukraine's far-right militias, but by March 2018, the U.S. Congress publicly denounced the Azov Battalion, banning the U.S. government for, from providing any arms, training, or other assistance to its fighters. Though largely symbolic, the move discouraged all Western military forces, and especially members of the NATO alliance, from trading alongside Azov fighters, training, or indeed having anything to do with them. It was a deep blow to morale, especially to Azov's military wing, says Sviatoslav Palomar, one of its top commanders. Some people still see us as hooligans and outlaws, he told Time during a visit to Azov's training base near Mariupol, where uniformed cadets had spent the day learning the proper way to hurl a grenade. We've come a long way since the early days. To prove it, <laughs> Azov tightened its standards for foreign fighters. But the shift did not obviate the need for Forum's brand of online recruitment. On the contrary, in the summer of 2018, Azov's political wing allowed him to use one of its cottages outside Kiev as a hostel for foreign fighters. Those who did not make the cut were channeled into one of Ukraine's other militia groups, in some cases, the regular Ukrainian military. So if you're not cut out for Azov, but you still want to be a racist, they've got a place for you. And Bellingcat, I hate these motherfuckers for what they've said ever since and for working with the CIA. But like, let's be fucking clear. This is a good article. A good article that the establishment probably would rather you not read. Especially since it has a fuck ton of information just an absolute metric fuck ton about these people and about how fascist they are and about how these people have been using social media to recruit and have been using like all available Western provided means to stay relevant. And uh, I wonder why this would be relevant to the story. Oh, right. Because... <laughs> During Beletsky's visit of the National Guard's Azov reg Regiment base on New Year's Eve, he also presented his vision for the future of Azov fighters. 2019 will be incredibly important for us. I'm hoping that it will become the year of Azov's and thus Ukraine's victories, Beletsky said during the event. Keep in mind, Beletsky is a massive racist piece of shit, a Nazi and leader of Patriot of Ukraine, a Nazi who helped inspire all of Ukraine's Nazism. Um, and he said that 2019 will be the year of... Well, I mean, I guess not. I guess you had to wait a little bit until the entire world decided to back up your Nazis. But um, in a report about the event, as well as numerous other occasions, the regiment's own site unequivocally characterized Bielecki as the leader of the Azov movement. That Azov movement that wants a global movement of Azov. White nationalism, Nazism on a global scale. That's what this guy is the leader of. Recognition of Bielecki as the leader of National Guard's Azov Regiment was echoed in February 2019 by the regiment's chief of staff, Sviatoslav Palomar, in a video interview. We have a leader in Andriy Bielecki who's currently an independent member of Parliament of Ukraine. According to Palomar, Bielecki takes care of raising financial support for the regiment and finds sponsors that invest money. 
like the CIA and Azov, enabling the regiment to have quality equipment, access to proving grounds, etc. Azov's incorporation into the National Guard has raised eyebrows within that militarized branch of Ukraine's law enforcement, as well as in the U.S. A 2017 interview of the current head of the National Guard of Ukraine, General Yuri Alarov, pointed to both his concerns about the regiment and its role in ensuring security in Ukraine's strategically important Mariupol region. As much as it's possible, we attempt to get rid of their pagan gestures and rituals that stand out so much. Like the Black Sun, like the Vorfsongo, like all these pagan symbols. Pagan symbols co-opted by Nazis and then copied by Nazis in Ukraine. They're not pagan symbols, they're Nazi symbols. I mean, they are pagan originally, not in a more. The black sun was never a pagan symbol. It was always Nazis. Fuck Nazis. But we don't bend them across the knee. Because, unfortunately, there's no comparable, motivated resistance movement like that in the east of Ukraine. Alarov said of Azov in 2017 interview. Far from <laughs> a new face in the... Newly strengthened Ukrainian armed forces, Alarov is a 54-year-old career military official who reportedly started his career in the Soviet Union. I just thought I'd bring this stuff up. Because it's exhausting to see the New York Times whitewash Nazis and a bunch of other people echo their sentiment. And a bunch of other people have the back of these Nazis, and the U.S. government give them money, arms, training, cover, foreign aid, in the form of food, fucking supplies, boots on the ground. And what's doubly frustrating is, we're going to World War III, this time in the full public support of Nazis, rather than finding out that the Nazis were being supported for all this time anyway. It's evil. It's evil, and I hate it. And I hope you hate it too. Because if the world ends in nuclear fire soon, you can know, as the fucking blast wave hits you, that you could have said no. And you could have done something originally. And that maybe Twitter giving cover to these people and allowing the Azov Battalion to run a massively successful Twitter account and all these social media companies suddenly allowing you to support Nazis as long as they're the Azov Battalion. Maybe that's a bigger problem than basically anything else right now. Because, yeah, fuck Russia and fuck their invasion. But do I, do I care that a couple of Nazis were prisoner of war? Do I care that a hundred other Nazis were prisoners of war? Fuck no, I don't give a shit. And neither should you. If you agree with that, feel free to like, share, subscribe, and uh, apocalyptically fucking <sighs> hammer that comment button in order to tell me what a fucking Kremlin stooge I am for having basic common sense about not supporting Nazis in 20 fucking goddamn two. Because... I feel like stopping a global Nazi movement is fucking necessary if we ever want to smash the fucking state.